What's up, Graham? It's Guys here. So how would you like to double your money by uh, this time tomorrow? Well, if that's the case, ignore Warren Buffett. Throw all the conventional investing wisdom out the window and instead look no further than Reddit. That's right. Within this small, tight-knit community of 10 million users, there appears to be a hidden formula to finding the next big 10-bagger, which includes the likes of Clover Health Investments, up 76% in 24 hours, Wendy's, yes, the fast food chain with Square Hamburgers, up 25%, Wish, the e-commerce platform, up 50%, all of which have garnered the front page headline of every major business publication that's got to leave you thinking. What's going on? How do they find out about this early enough to invest? And most importantly, are there any chicken tendies left for the rest of us? So let's cover all of that and more on this episode of The SEC is Cracking Down on the Gamification of Stocks and Why I'm Canceling Robinhood. Because I've had some issues with them that I have yet to talk about publicly until now. But really quick as usual, before we start, it would mean a lot to me if you crack down on that like button for the YouTube algorithm by regulating it until it turns blue. Plus, rumor has it that for every one like this video gets, a short seller loses a dollar. So thank you guys so much, and now let's begin. So before we go into all of these tantalizing money printing details, we first gotta talk about meme stocks. See, in the olden days of investing in the long, long ago last year, investing was based on a company's core fundamentals of expected growth, earnings, net profit, and cash flow. And from there, you would make a calculated investment in terms of how undervalued you felt they were. But today, it's almost as though the traditional investing advice no longer applies because the stocks that are doing the best, at least in the short term, have absolutely nothing to do with fundamentals at all. But instead, they're based on a combination of sudden investor enthusiasm, short seller interest, and the potential to make a lot of money very quickly, which you could then post on Reddit for internet points that unfortunately don't have any cash value. Okay, but seriously, meme investing has sparked the entire growth of a community dedicated to finding beaten down, overly shorted stocks that with the right catalyst and enough momentum could skyrocket in price, cause short sellers to lose billions of dollars, and make the people who bought in early really rich in the process. Lately, the attention has turned to a mixture of GameStop, which recently came back above $300 a share, AMC, which rose in price in the expectation of a hedge fund short squeeze, and now Clover Health, which is said to be experiencing a gamma short squeeze, with over 43% of their shares being short, along with Wish going up in price from a 51% short position. Or in other words, all you need to know is this. Reddit users are looking for overly shorted stocks in precarious positions that hedge funds believe will be going down in price. And then they begin buying buying them up, causing retail momentum to drive the price even higher, causing hedge funds to have to cover their positions, which causes the price to rise even higher and higher and higher. It's pretty much the stock market version of putting Mentos in a Coke bottle and then watching it explode, except with money. But critics of this say that it's not investing, it's gambling, and they blame the surge of meme investing on the apps that make it all possible to begin with, like Robinhood. In the last 30 days, despite stocks like AMC being up 465%, GameStop 109%, BlackBerry 94% and Build-A-Bear 132%, the SEC says that they want to crack down on the gamification of stocks with a new regulatory layer that would directly impact some of the most popular stock trading apps being used right now to process these trades. Their thinking is that at some point, these stocks are going to come crashing down, just like GameStop fell from $483 to $40 in three weeks, or like how originally AMC dropped from its January high of $20 down to a low of $5. Because just as easily as you can make a lot of money, you can but also lose a lot of money, and that's where all of this begins. The SEC recently said that they're worried that these stocks are too easy to trade on Robinhood and elsewhere, and that investors could be setting themselves up for massive losses. He then went on to say that one of the ways to deal with the gamification of trading is to force brokers to act more like fiduciaries, as opposed to passive trading platforms that merely process trades. For them, it would really be no different than putting a warning label on an alcoholic drink or a parental advisory sticker on a CD. Remember those? And in this way, a brokerage would be less likely to incentivize you to make such trades when they themselves benefit from the data that you give them. Instead, a brokerage would, as they say, look out for your best interest and make you aware that, hey, you might lose some money on the stock, but as long as you check this box and agree, there you go, now you can give us your money. Some brokerages have even tried to get ahead of the curve in advance before they happen. Like, for example, the free stock trading app Public places a high-risk tag on certain stocks and a warning that comes up that you have to acknowledge before proceeding forward. From there, you can still trade whatever you want, but at least you better understand the risks. The issue that Robinhood previously faced was that the SEC said that they made investing a little bit too easy and a little bit too similar to gambling by giving their users free stocks held within a scratch-off ticket that rained confetti. 
In this case, investing feels a little bit more like a game with the screen flashing red or green depending on whether or not you gained or lost money. Which I will admit, I liked, I thought was a lot of fun, and that helped appeal to a brand new audience who ordinarily would have had no interest whatsoever in building their wealth. But unfortunately, that also came with the dark side of some people taking it a bit too far. For example, the New York Times ran an article about a 32-year-old investor who said he was lured into the app through features that included falling confetti and emoji-filled phone notifications. But after repeated losing money, he took out $60,000 from home equity to put into even riskier options in hopes of making his money back. Surprisingly, after having some initial success, he grew that account to over a million dollars before proceeding to lose all of it, and his account is now down to $7,000. Now, according to an analysis of industry data and legal filings, as well as interviews with past and current Robinhood employees, they say the app was built on what appears to be a Silicon Valley playbook of behavioral nudges and push notifications to draw investors towards risky trading, which happens to make Robinhood quite a lot of money in the process. And the gamification of investing is working. In the first three months of 2020, Robinhood users traded nine times as many shares as E-Trade customers and 40 times as many shares as Charles Schwab customers. They also bought and sold 88 times as many risky options contracts as Schwab's customers relative to the average account size according to the analysis. That, they say, leads their customers to making decisions not in their own best interest, but in the best interest of Robinhood, who benefits from excess trading. Others are concerned that Robinhood is not doing enough to protect their own customers against the risks of investing. As evidenced by a tragic situation in which 20-year-old Alex Kearns took his own life after thinking he had lost $730,000 trading an investment that he should not have been qualified to make. So the SEC has a solution and they call it regulation best interests that would warn users before they invest in a volatile stock. They also argue that because Robinhood rewards its users when they place a trade, that could be interpreted interpreted as the company giving advice. And if a company has an influence on which stocks you invest in, then technically they should be guiding you towards the stocks that are in your own best interest. The SEC then ended their statement by saying that they'll continue to monitor the meme stock frenzy in light of the ongoing volatility in certain stocks to determine if there have been any disruptions of the market, manipulative trading, or other misconduct. Now obviously though, this has not stopped meme stock communities and Wall Street bets from finding beaten down stocks, buying them up, and making a lot of money. But even though they're tends to be a predictable pattern in terms of which stocks are bought up. It doesn't always appear to be true. For example, this week, Wendy's was the go-to fast food stock that was serving a lot more than just chicken tendies. But they don't fit the mold of the traditional meme stock in the sense that they're heavily shorted and low-hanging fruit. In fact, it was just a few days ago that a Reddit user said they were actually legitimately undervalued. And then we have the catalyst. Only 6% or 13 million shares are available for retail trading. Meaning if this thing were to go viral, a low scarce city of shares combined with low volume combined with high interest means a little buying push could move the price very quickly, very high. And well, that's kind of what happened. At the time I was planning this video, Wendy's shares were about $28 a share, and as for where it could go from here, it's really too early to tell. But they are, however, very active on Twitter, where one user asks if their new salad has superhero powers, to which they respond, I legally cannot say that, but it is super good. Now obviously, this was enticing to see if they would respond to me too, so I took to Twitter and tag them in a post saying, if you could remind my viewers to smash the like button, I will immediately go ahead and buy your salad. And guess what? They didn't respond. So it's definitely not as bullish as I would have expected, and maybe that's why their stock is down today. But hey, you know what? I tried. Anyway, the way I see it, when it comes to meme stock investing, listen, I get it, I see the appeal. It's hard not to look at strangers on the internet making hundreds of thousands of dollars in a few days and thinking, hey, you know, I should be able to do that too. But at their core, meme stocks make very little fundamental sense in terms of the company itself, they're extremely risky. And just as easily as you could make money, you could lose money. The losers, unfortunately, are the ones we rarely hear about. And during a meme stock frenzy, it's easy to feel compelled to buy in at whatever price it's trading at with the hope that maybe you would be able to sell it for more in the future and walk away with a profit. But that does not always happen, and usually it's the people who could least afford to lose money who wind up losing money. For example, had you bought a few of these stocks yesterday before the market closed at the time I was planning this video, here's how you would be doing today. GameStop up 4.5%, AMC down 8.65%, Clover Health down 11.4%, and Wendy's down 11.4%. I think stories like this would be way more common if people felt comfortable talking about it. But there's often a shame associated with losing money, and not too many people want to admit that they impulsively bought in and then sold at a loss. Don't invest what you can't afford to lose. Set a limit in terms of where you're going to be taking profits. Diversify into other investments, and understand the risks with what you're doing. 
doing. I understand it's really easy to think that, oh, I only have $10,000. It's going to take too long to hit a million, so I may as well just go and YOLO everything I have because that's my only chance. But then we really just got to call it for what it is, and that's gambling. And you should at least make an effort to have an entry and exit point ahead of time so you don't get caught up in the emotion of having this stock rise and fall in a matter of days. And I think it's pretty obvious that meme stock investing is here to stay, and even if they put warning labels on certain stocks, I don't think that's going to dissuade anybody who's convinced they want to buy in. I think what's most likely going to happen from this is that fundamentally it's going to discourage short sellers from overly shorting a stock. Hedge funds might also quickly de-risk as soon as they catch any wind of a meme stock rally. And over time, there's probably going to be a more balanced price discovery of stocks, instead of finding the one that's most shorted and then driving it up from there. But enough about meme stocks. Let's go back to Robinhood, and uh, I'll tell you the reason I'm canceling them. First of all, it's important to mention that as somebody who talks nonstop about personal finance, it's my job to use every single stock market brokerage out there. I trade with everything. I see which features I like and which features I don't like, and many of these accounts have been set up for years. But unfortunately, Robinhood has been the one lately giving me a lot of problems. Now, in the past, it's not bothered me that they route order flow. Pretty much every single brokerage does it, and it was never an issue. I also was not affected by them temporarily shutting down meme stock investing during the GameStop saga. And for the most part, I've just had money sitting on that account for quite some time that I've just let grow. But since then, a few things have happened. On April 15th, I got a notice that my account had been restricted and that I would be unable to withdraw money from the platform. You know, I thought, fine, it doesn't really matter to me much anyway, I wasn't planning on moving money around, so I'll just get that sorted and leave it be. But then, immediately after, I also got hit with a deposit restriction, which means I can't deposit any more money on the platform, which again, I thought, okay, fine, it's not that big of a deal, I have plenty of other brokerages out there, it'll be fine. But once I got that notice, I went ahead and uploaded my driver's license, my passport, and my social security card, so that way they'd be able to verify my identity. But two weeks went by and nothing happened, so I emailed their support team to follow up, and they responded by saying, due to the nature of your claim, we are escalating your case to our fraud investigations team. If necessary, a representative from Robinhood will contact you by phone. So then after that, another two weeks goes by and I hear nothing. So I follow up with them again and I get another reply. Just following up on your case and letting you know that the information you provided is still being investigated. Our team will follow up with you soon. Now, another week goes by and I send a follow-up email and I get back. The time to complete our investigation varies for each account and situation, but we will keep you updated along the way. It has now been two months, there's still been no progress made, my account is still locked, and I have no access to my money. I even gave them the benefit of the doubt by sending them an email last night before even making this video just to see if maybe something could get resolved, to which again I get this email. I have reached out to our fraud team for an update. As soon as I hear fro I am them, I will be sure to update you. Thank you for your continued patience. Now had this been a situation where this was my only account and I needed the money for rent or bills or anything like that, I would have been screwed. This unfortunately is a huge problem and is the reason why I'm planning to remove all of my money from the platform as soon as this restriction is lifted. I usually tend to be pretty easygoing with stuff like this and I don't even mind if my money is locked up for a few weeks or even a month or two at a time. But now two months and no indication of what's going on at all, I've just had enough. So that's why I'm canceling it. It really sucks. This was just the final straw and keeping this going for two months now is just too much to ignore. So those are my thoughts on those two topics. When it comes to meme stock investing, just to understand the risks associated with what you're doing and make sure you have enough money diversified elsewhere in the event of a short-term loss. However, it's obvious that meme stocks are here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future. And hedge funds should be very cautious about which stocks they end up shorting because all it takes is a few of these in a row and then poof! it's all gone. And for Robinhood, just open my account. Customer service is so important and there's no reason why it should take two months to lift the restrictions on my account for what seems to be just a standard identity verification. I'm just glad I have more than one account and I have plenty of other options to turn to in the meantime. But had Robinhood been my only account and that's it, I would have been royally f So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. I post there pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there as on my second channel, The Graham Stephan Show. I post there every single day. I'm not posting here. So if you want to see a brand new video from me every single day, make sure to add yourself to that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.